So here's a video. I thought this would be the easiest way to kind of explain how I've done things in the past. So here's a diagram of the orchard. Uh, here is the west fence. Here's 1500 north. You have four hydrants that I've got hoses connected to along that west fence. Enable them one, two, three, and four. <clears throat> They feed into, there's on all those, there's a two inch line coming off and it'll feed a two inch and it tapers down to an inch and a half then one inch. And those are connected to um, basically what I would call, I usually call them blocks and we'll I'll explain that in a minute. But basically this first hydrant feeds, here's would be like the primarily the apples. This second one here with this would be like the peaches and the apricots and pears down here. This number three feeds the apples that are over in this section. And this number four feeds this area, which is almost all peaches. The way I typically would turn them on is I would, you only have to open these up about two thirds of a turn, those hydrants. And I usually would open each, I'd open this about a, a third of a turn. And I'd walk down and open this one about a third and then keep going down opening a third and just let some water go down the lines to kind of build up pressure. And then after I waited down here for a couple minutes and I'd open that one another third, so it's open about two thirds, then I'd walk back and open this a third and another, this another third and this another third. So there's two thirds. <clears throat> if you have all four of these open and every line running, every valve down here open, you're running at what we call about a half a foot per second and the way the best way to understand this is um, I wrote this down so one uh, one cubic foot per second is what our foot per second is what the water office measures water in and so they give you hours at the water office and that's number of hours you, you have at one foot per second which is seven and a half gallons per second so a seven and a half gallons per second works out to be about 27,000 gallons of water per hour. So when they say you have four hours worth of water, you basically have four times 27,000, which is 108,000 gallons of water. Um, I never used a full one um, foot per second. Um, when you have, if you have all four of these on, and every one of these valves open, um, the restriction is how much water you can get out of each little uh, sprayer. And if you have all that open and all that going at once, it works out to be the water flow is about 13,000 gallons an hour, which would be about half a foot per second. So if you had everything open in the orchard and you had all of these turned on for every hour you ran, you essentially ran half a foot per second per hour. If you, um, so that's like your maximum flow. I always ordered a quarter of a foot and this is the reason why. At a quarter foot on each of these lines, you got about 1500 gallons per hour going through. Um, the filter at that rate of 1500 gallons typically would take a couple hours before they would get so dirty that they need to be flushed. Um, at a full half, if you've got everything going, um, it's usually every hour you've got to walk down and flush these filter or else um, they plug and you don't get any water down the lines. You'll see your, your nozzles will stop spraying. So that just gives me a little bit more time. And so, um, and then typically what I would do is in order to to achieve this, rather than just doing two at a time like this, I would, um, I would open like one, two, three, have like these three open here and then leave these two closed. And then I'd have like maybe these three open here and leave these two closed. And on this side, I'd have like maybe these two open here and leave these three closed. So I'd have basically at any one given time, I would have half of all the valves open and half closed. So at, I'm allowing essentially, you know, 1500 gallons per hour through each of those filters by having half of the valves open and half closed. And I would run that for six hours. 
And then at the six hour point, these that were open, I would close all of these and then open all the ones that I had closed. And then, um, so again, you only have half of them open for the second six hours. So I would typically order quarter foot for 12 hours. And I do that once a week. I usually started at nine in the morning and I went until nine at night. That worked with my work schedule just because I usually would go in at seven. I took my first break around nine. So I ran over the orchard and got it started. Um, and then, you know, it would run till about three o'clock. I would still have to run over then on my lunch break. I'd take an early lunch at 11, come flush the filters again, um, usually 11 or noon. And then um, about three o'clock when I got off from work, I would come and turn all the valves, close all the ones that were open, open the ones that were closed at three o'clock. And then I would, you know, go do, I could work there at the orchard or whatever. Um, the, the problem is, especially early in the season, the water is dirty enough to where you have to flush these filters every couple hours. And so the days you water are typically busy. Um, it's on, in the early season, I typically do that on a Saturday. But once farmer's market started, I couldn't get away from the farmer's market. And so I would do that on Friday. And that's why I said I would come, go to work at 7 on my first break. At 9, I'd turn them on, come over at 11, 12, and then come back over at 3. And that's just the way I had to do it. So um, hopefully that makes sense. So, you know, I, I would have all four valves open, only run half of these. You'll see as you go down the line here. Half of these um, lines, I would valves, I would have open and half closed. So here's a schematic of what those lines look like. Um, you'll have a two-inch line here, go, running down the length of the orchards. They'll have a two-inch by two-inch by one. There's a valve here that you can turn off and on. That feeds into a, a pipe that goes into a one by one by one T. Those one inch lines will run the length of that, what I would call a block. Then there's all these one inch by one inch by halves that feed the, the lines going down each row of the orchard. And so you can turn the water off and on here at each valve if you need to, to turn the water off and on to each block. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives you an idea. There's the, the, to flush the valves on those, those big black filters there's a valve on the bottom that you open. Then there's a crank on the other end that you crank open and that spins a spinner inside that flushes all the debris off out the other, out the other end of the, the filter. And then when you're done, so you, op you open the filter up, you go back down, you close it, close the bottom of the filter on this end. And then um, there's one of them, it's uh, this one, number two. Um, the filter system is broken on that. Those filters are about $700 a piece to replace. And so rather than buying a new filter housing with a crank, I just turn the water off at the, the hydrant, turn it off, walk down, and you can just manually screw the whole bottom half of the housing on. I take the filter out, go over to number one, and then I open the bottom of the filter on the, the left-hand side, I just open that valve, crack it open so it's streaming water, shooting water out, and then I can use that to, to jet off the filter. Um, and then when it's clean, I go back, put it in, tighten it back up, turn the water on. Um, and just that's how I've been doing it the last couple of years. Um, so that's that. I wanted to provide to you information just about what I see, how much time it actually it realistically how much time it spends to do everything. Um, typically in an average month, you'll, you'll water the orchard four times. I typically on a day I would end up, especially if I was working and I'd only actually be over there about six hours, even though it'd run for 12, but still at six hours you're over there, you're about 24 hours a month. Typically need to spray the trees two to three times a month. The apples and pears about every two weeks, I'd need to spray them you'd end up spraying the peach trees and the plum trees, the trunks of the trees once a month with um, permethrin or pyrethrin that, that's down there. And so you work out to be about nine to 12 hours per month. 
Um, I typically, in the springtime, if it's wet, you'll end up mowing more often, but typically it's about a once a month deal. It takes about six hours to mow the whole orchard. I typically try to weed eat along the rows if possible once a month. That takes about six to eight hours. If you spray Roundup along the the lines where the rows where that little black tube runs down, um, just being careful as not to get it on the trunks of the trees. But if you just spray Roundup, then you don't have to weed eat along the rows. But it does take about eight hours to do the entire orchard. Um, in August to September, I probably spend eight to 10 hours a week harvesting fruit. Um, in especially in June, I probably would spend that much time, eight to 10 hours a week, thinning primarily the peaches, but also doing hand thinning on the uh, apples. You can do chemical thinning, but you do have to do some more hand thinning. So um, basically from mid-July through mid-October, you're looking at about 25 hours, 24 hours a week is realistically what I typically spent over there. Um, my schedule is I, I would work, I went to work at seven in the morning. I usually plan to get home at seven at night, <clears throat> which allowed me to have about three to four hours a day over at the orchard. Monday through Friday. I usually worked eight to 12 hours on Saturdays. And during harvest time, I, I typically had to go over for one to two hours on Sunday afternoon so that we had stuff to sell off our porch on Monday morning. Uh, these were these are some of the capital costs that I, inv I um, talked to you on the phone. Um, some of it's been depreciated, some of it hasn't. Um, basically variable costs, what you'd be looking, I'm gonna pay the water at least for the next few seasons. Typically it's about $700 a year for the Ashley Valley water users. That's the main irrigation line. I have the, the culinary water, the spigot that's over on Vernal Avenue. Um, Seth's paying that now, so you don't have to worry about that. That was like $25 a month to have water there. I usually spend a couple hundred dollars both on weed killer and pesticides each year. About $400 on packaging costs, usually about $200 for the bags and another $200 for boxes. Um, there are some boxes down there in the shed that you can use. Um, there might be a few bags left, but I don't think so. Uh, typically, I'd spend anywhere from $500 to $1,000 a year on fertilizer. So going forward, that's something. I know I left at least a year's worth of fertilizer down there. But long term, uh, again, this is something that you'll need to consider. Um, over the last three years, this is kind of roughly what we harvested and sold. Um, typically, a lot of these trees produced a lot more than this, but we just couldn't sell it, especially things like the Lodi. You know, uh, two years ago, we probably had a thousand pounds of Lodi apples, but I think we sold maybe four or five hundred pounds. Uh, the Fuji apples are at the end of the season. I think two years ago, we probably had a thousand pounds of Fuji, but we probably sold 500 of it before it froze. Um, so you can see we typically, I mean, over the last three years, we probably had four to 6,000 pounds of apples, um, peaches, a couple years or three years ago, two years ago, we probably had 2000 pounds of peaches last year. I think it was about a thousand the year before is about 1500. Um, plums, we typically sold two to 300 pounds, but you probably ended up letting at least that much just freeze because they're usually late in the season. Apricots, five to 700 pounds. You usually sold about 500 pounds of pears per year. So in total, you're probably looking at six to 8,000 pounds of fruit. Um, some of it because we wanted to move it, like things like Lodi apples and Gravenstein, um, Ida res we sold essentially for a dollar a pound. Things like peaches and um, uh, honey crisp apples, we got closer to two dollar, about two dollars a pound for those. And so, you know, anywhere you could thinking anywhere from eight to ten thousand dollars a year. Um, but you know, when you've got your variable costs fixed in there, it's probably another two or three thousand dollars. So the real question is, is it worth it to you to make? You know, five to seven thousand dollars, basically knowing you're going to invest five hundred five hundred hours over the next, you know, four or five months um, working on this. And so that's again, it, um, it's just something that you're going to have to decide whether it's worth it to you 
or not. I mean, if it, I, I think lo looking back at it, in my own opinion, um, had I known the yields and just yields were going to be low and it was going to be hard to move fruit at times, um, would I have done this again? I probably wouldn't. It was a, it's a kind of a good adventure and stuff. And I, it, it'd be a great part-time business if I was like semi-retired type of thing, but trying to work full time and keep the orchard going just proved to be too much. Um, but hopefully that gives you some information on at least how to get going or how I did the, the water. Um, and if you have any questions, you can reach out and ask me, but hopefully this diagram kind of helps. Again, you know, I turned these on about three quarters of a away. I turned, I only had about half the valves open at any one given time when I ordered watered and then I water for 12 hours, six hours per, per, you know, per block, you know, and then I would go through after six hours and switch it. And usually that was enough to keep the um, orchard wet. I will say that as the season goes on, especially in August and September, the water gets cleaner. And so you only have to flush your filters two or three times during a whole day. In May and June, when the water is more turbid, sometimes you have to flush those filters every hour. And um, that's just part of the the problem of having dirty water coming down Ashley Creek. So anyways, hopefully this helps you and uh, I'll sure I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.